The FIA Formula E car started with a fixed specification. A battery, an inverter to transfer the electrical energy to a single motor driving a four-speed gearbox. But Formula E has always been about improving the breed of electric vehicles. To do this, the rules are set up to allow the manufacturers to focus on the electrical powertrain, developing technologies for the future. In Season 3, we're now in the second cycle of development, and eight manufacturers have produced new powertrains. Each of these is unique, and the level of technology on show in the back of the cars is at a seriously high standard. Renault won both championships in Season 2, so other teams have adopted their winning approach. In Season 2, DS Virgin made the bold step with very different e-motor technology, running two pancake motors transversely mounted without the need for a multi-speed gearbox. This twin motor setup worked well, but the added weight of the setup hindered handling throughout the year. So, to make the car lighter, DS Virgin have dropped the twin motors and now run a single motor, transversely mounted with a two-speed gearbox a la Renault in Season 2. All new tech for DS, but with a proven solution, and it's the same at Mahindra. With a desire to progress up the grid, Mahindra has opted for a full second-generation powertrain, which also takes its cues from Renault. Partnering with Italian experts Magnetti Morelli, Mahindra run a six-phase motor, effectively two three-phase units with one casing. This season, Dragon has moved from Venturi to adopt Mahindra's drivetrain. But have Renault moved the game on? With so much proven so right in Season 2, the transverse single motor layout remains the same. But the powertrain now runs without the two-speed gearbox, the idea being to reduce weight and friction losses. The question is, will this affect performance without a lower gear to accelerate from slow turns or a higher gear on the long straights? Will Renault have gone too far? Will the car still be consistently quick on all circuits? The Cheetah certainly hope so, as they've become a Renault customer and run the same hardware and software as the champion team. Audi Abd are sticking to their guns. Unlike many of its rivals, the work has not been a revision, but is about refinement. They retain the same layout with a single longitudinal motor and three-speed gearbox, but with all the individual elements optimised. Audi Abd will be hoping that the flexibility of three gears will outperform their rivals. For Season 3, Venturi's powertrain is now in its third iteration. It's the details that they've refined, so again, proven technology can be an advantage. As this is their first season, Jaguar have less experience, but with the assistance of partner Williams, they've produced their own powertrain with a single motor driving a two-speed gearbox. It may be a more traditional approach, but in a debut season, they'll be watching and learning with great things expected to come. Andretti has now completed the development of its own powertrain with Magneti Morelli's six-phase motor in a Season 1-style layout. Fortune favours the brave, and Next EV are keeping to their twin-motor philosophy. In Season 2, it didn't perform, but major lessons were learned, and the team have now an all-new improved powertrain. The twin pancake motors are now mounted transversely without a multi-speed gearbox. Further saving weight with a new carbon fibre casing that encloses the motors. The new car certainly brought back a welcome smile to Nelson Piquet's face, taking pole position in Hong Kong. But was that a false new dawn? Now round two in Marrakesh will show us more about who's got it right.